Welcome to Lord and Richards Radio, a program that will enable you to become more financially independent and prosperous from a biblical point of view. Tune in each week to learn how to prosper through good markets and bad. Now, here's our host, Colin Richards, Denver's Biblical Investment Advisor. Hi, friends. I'm glad to be with you today on Lord and Richards Radio. I'm Colin Richards founder and president of Lord & Richards. We're a team of advisors who are dedicated to helping people just like you retire financially independent. And we're doing that every single day. On this show, we're discussing investing and planning from the perspective of key biblical principles, a little bit different way of looking at money. We also talk about how to use methods and strategies that will enable you to prosper through both up and down markets. And that's so important in today's volatile world. I'd love to chat with you. My team and I would love to help you talk to you about your specific questions regarding retirement and saving and investing from a biblical point of view. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592-1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. Hey folks, this is Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord & Richards, and I am absolutely thrilled to be talking to you today. It is our privilege as advisors and my team at Lord & Richards to be talking with people just like you every single day about how you can achieve financial independence in a volatile world. And talk about volatility. We've got wars in Russia and Ukraine. We've got hurricanes in Florida. We've got an economic recession looming on the horizon. We've got market crashes. It is a challenging time. And the folks I'm talking to are worried that events out of your control are going to mess up your retirement. That's the bottom line. And so what we're going to do is teach you at Lord & Richards how you can develop a plan to achieve retirement without worry. We call it a financial independence review, and we'd love to talk to you more about it. Today, we're going to begin with a Bible study found in Proverbs 28, Proverbs 28, and we're going to grab three verses from this segment of Solomon's wisdom. Proverbs 28, 6 says, Better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than a rich man who is crooked in his ways. The title of this segment is, When is it better to be poor? When is it better to actually be poor? You say, well, Colin, I I don't think I've ever craved poverty in my life. Well, it's better to be a poor man that has integrity than a rich man who is crooked. The passage goes on to say, a rich man is wise in his own eyes, Proverbs 28, 11, but a poor man who has understanding will find him out. So again, now we've got integrity, we've got understanding or wisdom compared to a rich man who is either crooked or just thinks they're smart. Then Proverbs 28, 8 really gets down and dirty here. Whoever multiplies his wealth by interest and profit gathers it for him who is generous to the poor. So some real contrast between the poor and the wealthy, but in this case, the poor is being held forth as an example and the wealthy person is being held forth as a person to be despised. Well, what does that mean? Well, when is it better to be poor? Well, number one, it is better to be poor and be a person of integrity than have all the riches in the world. Your integrity, your character, your reputation, that's what's gonna matter to you at the end of life, not how much riches you have amassed. And too often, those who have amassed significant wealth have done so unjustly, right? The stories go on and on of people who have taken advantage of others in order to accumulate wealth. Maybe they've cheated on their taxes. Maybe they've undermined somebody else to get ahead. This person is described as a crooked person, twisted in how they view life and how they go about their ways. Their thinking gets twisted, and they believe it's all about them. This type of person really organizes their whole life around themselves, their pleasure. And you know what? You don't have to be a rich person to think this way. People of all economic levels can become selfish and self-oriented. You say, well, I do things for for others. I, I do these kinds of... Well, here's the question. Is that the habit, the pattern of your daily life? Or are those occasional things that just randomly happen that aren't really a part of your character? Whereas the poor person in this passage is a person who walks a straight path, right? He has integrity. 
integrity comes from building materials, right? We talk about building materials having structural integrity. They can withstand pressure, right? They can withstand heat. And those that don't have good enough integrity are going to buckle under circumstances. Well, that's an analogy of life, right? If you've got integrity, if you've got character, character means that no matter what the pressure, no matter what the heat, you're going to stand up for what's right and always do what's right. You say, well, that sounds pretty hard to achieve. Well, it is in our own flesh, but with the power of God and Jesus Christ in our life, we can live a life of integrity. Now, talking about these rich people who are crooked in their ways, you know, perhaps, according to Proverbs 28.8, perhaps part of that is they're charging excessive interest. We call it usury, right? The Hebrew word for interest, interest in this passage, or usury, means to bite, and it's a word form that is also used to talk about a snake. So visualize the biting of a snake, and that's what it's like to charge interest on the poor. When the wealthy charge interest on the poor, they are taking a bite out of that person. Now, of course, you might be asking, well, Colin, is it always wrong to charge interest? I mean, I thought interest was okay. Well, the Bible pushes the wealthy towards giving to the poor, not charging them interest. In the mind of God, it's better to meet the need rather than to make that person work potentially for years to replace the money. Now, when interest is charged, it should never be usury. It should never be an exorbitant amount. A small amount of interest, a small amount of interest as a business endeavor, lending is okay. In the end, though, the crooked rich man lends his money out to get a little bit of interest off the backs of the poor, but he ends up leaving his money to those who are generous to the poor, according to the passage. They will gather it for him who is generous to the poor. Now, there's a second reason it's better sometimes to be poor. Number one, if you're a person of integrity. Number two, if you're a person of wisdom, it's better to be poor and have wisdom. You know, sometimes just being wealthy makes a person think that their thinking and their worldview has been validated. Look, I'm successful. I'm rich. Therefore, you need to listen to me. Well, the wealth that they achieved may have been done crookedly. They may have gathered it in a crooked manner, as we've already discussed. So it really is only evidence of their foolishness, right? So you can look around. It doesn't take long to look at how some people spend their money and realize that is a foolish person, right? Extravagant living, gold-plated fixtures, hot rods and high-end cars end up eating all that they have, and it does very little good for themselves or others. But a poor man of wisdom and understanding will uncover the folly of the rich man. A poor man who has wisdom and understanding will actually find out the rich man who is in folly. So there are a couple of times when it's better to be poor. If you can have your integrity intact, choose being poor over being rich. If you can have wisdom, choose poor over being rich. Now, does God say that automatically having wealth and riches is wrong? No. Very often, he will bless. But let me tell you something. Riches and wealth are more of a test than a blessing. It is a test of your character. It's a test of your integrity. It's a test of your wisdom. And those who use them wisely will heap to themselves treasures that are eternal and not temporal. Well, here at Lord & Richards, we are trying to help you make wise decisions, decisions of character and integrity about whatever it is that God has entrusted to you whether that's a nice retirement portfolio or whether you're just getting going, we want to help you and encourage you along the way. And we have a wonderful process we call a financial independence review. It just means sitting down with a compassionate, caring, highly qualified advisor to help you navigate the path to and through retirement safely and without worry. It just starts with a simple conversation. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592- 1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. Hey folks, this is Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord and Richards. And once again, I'm delighted to be visiting with you about key economic principles that are going to help you achieve 
financial independence. And that's what it's about today. And especially with the markets in turmoil, it's a critical time to make sure that you have a written plan to achieve it. Now, in previous segments, we talked about how to create an economic bubble around you and your family. As markets surge and as they plummet, it can be very disconcerting. And one of the best things that you can do is develop a plan so that whether markets are soaring or whether they're falling, you are thriving. And so I'd encourage you to go back and listen to those segments on YouTube or on our uh, one of our many podcast channels about how to thrive when markets crash and how to create an economic bubble around you and your family. And at the end of that last segment on the economic bubble, I kind of tipped us off that we were going to be talking about how foundations, institutions, endowments, hospitals, colleges, academic institutions, pension funds, how do these large wealthy entities, some of the largest pools of wealth on earth, how do they weather the storm? Surely they can't be doing it just the way everybody else is in their 401k, riding the wave up and then coming crashing down, taking the roller coaster ride that's so nauseating. Many people are beginning to repeat the behavior that I saw people back in 2008 do, and that is they're not even opening their statements. They're sick to their stomach because it causes them too much worry and anxiety. Oh, folks, that's not the way to be. So much better if we can develop a plan to manage risk and learn from some of these powerhouse entities, how are they doing it so that they're not wiped out? You know, we love hospitals that take care of our children. The Children's Hospital here in Denver is one of those that has done a great job for my child. And I got to say, if they've got an endowment, which they do, they're not going to want to see it go wild any more than you as a prospective retiree is going to want to see that happen. So what do entities like that do? Well, they hire investment committees, organizations to develop risk management strategies so that not only can their endowment grow and serve the needs of their customers, uh, underwrite grants, provide money for new research, therapies, and treatments for children, but also so that they have stability in that portfolio, right? Because nobody wants to see their portfolio going all over the place. So at Lord & Richards, we've done a deep dive study on how foundations and endowments invest. And we can learn from that and apply that together to your financial independence roadmap. Here's how they do it. Well, for starters, if you pull up an annual report which is put out every year about how foundations and community private foundations and other foundations invest, you can get a list of what they're investing predominantly in. And there's some familiar stuff like um, U.S. stock equities, right? How about some foreign equities and stock? How about some fixed income, some bonds, some treasuries, some cash, right? But would it surprise you to know that one of the largest components of foundations and endowments is an alternative portfolio, alternative strategies that don't fit into the mold of stocks, bonds, mutual funds. You say, wow, I didn't know that. Well, now we do, and we can apply that. To invest like an endowment, there are going to be three things that you need right off the top. You need better skills. Well, folks, a lot of us are busy living our life, putting our kids through school, We might need a little bit of help on that one. Number two, you need longer what we call gestation periods. You need to be willing to invest in tools where your money is held for a longer time, right? So that those tools are less volatile. So better skills, longer gestation periods, and usually higher minimums. Well, that can be a roadblock, right? Because if you're just Mr. and Mrs. Normal, maybe you don't have billions like these foundations and, and institutions and endowments have. Maybe you've just got a normal portfolio designed to get you through life. Well, these higher minimums have traditionally been a problem. But at Lord & Richards, we have cultivated relationships so that we can pool together the assets of many, many people and bring billions of dollars to play and draw in the institutional risk managers that normally would only work for pensions and foundations and states and religious organizations and so on. So it's pretty cool what we're able to do to help you moderate risk in your portfolio by drawing in some of the best wealth managers available out there. You say, well, well, what are they doing in this 
alternative space, right? I understand they're probably picking really good stocks and they're doing a good job with that, but if alternatives are ending up being somewhere between 25 and 50% of a foundation's portfolio, what can we learn from that? Well, every time we invest in alternatives, we've got a couple of different ways we can go. We can try to mimic the return of equities and try to get maybe even more on the upside, or we can try to mimic the safety of bonds. In both cases, there's problems, right? There's compromises. With equities going up, they can also go down. With the safety of certain types of bonds, sometimes their returns aren't very enticing. So the question is, are there alternative strategies where we can combine together the safety of certain types of bonds with the growth and the opportunity of equities in the stock market and develop a tool and a process and an approach that we call institutional risk management, institutional risk management. And there are some wonderful tools at our disposal at Lord & Richards. Traditionally, you would have to have large portfolios and satisfy large minimums to get access to hedging. This is where a small amount of the upside is taken away in exchange for more protection on the downside so that you have a cushion beneath you so that your portfolio can't fall as far as it would go otherwise. There are tactical strategies that we can get you access to that allow you to have a scientific and a calculus sort of method of moving assets from volatility to lower volatility during periods of market instability. And of course, you don't have to do it. We hire what we call chickens to sit on your eggs at Lord & Richards. And these wonderful folks are professionals at reducing volatility in your portfolio. And then we have other strategies that are maybe longer term that take advantage of limited access to reduce volatility. Um, some of these might be real estate or other types of invest investments, but they're called interval funds. That means you can only take money out at certain designated intervals. This keeps the portfolio from being too volatile. These and other strategies are a way to cushion the blow when the market goes down. And of course, still achieve growth when the market is going up. What's the compromise? Well, We've got some risk in there, but we're going to moderate that risk. In our next session, we're going to talk about how to develop a, a, an alternative strategy that has zero downside risk, right? For that, we're going to make another compromise. We're going to talk a little bit about liquidity. But it all really starts with a simple conversation about how we can help you develop a plan for financial independence using tools, methods, and strategies that aren't being commonly used by typical brokers and advisors today. I would love to chat with you. My team would love to chat with you about how you can take greater control of your financial future. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592-1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. Hey folks, this is Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord & Richards, and I'm excited to be bringing to you today concepts that will help you achieve financial independence, particularly as you plan and prepare for retirement, because a lot of folks are worried with all the volatility going on these days that their retirement is going to be messed up by circumstances outside of their control. And so what we're going to do is help you develop a plan to achieve financial independence so you can retire without worry. And we want you to do that so you can do amazing things with the resources God's put in your hands. Well, one of the topics we've been discussing recently is how institutions, endowments, and foundations invest to reduce volatility, to reduce all that wild swinging that goes on in so many of our portfolios. We know that these institutions don't want to see wild swings. They want to see steady eddy. They want to see consistent, moderate growth as opposed to highs and lows that are dramatic and often costly. And in the previous segment called Investing Like an Endowment, we talked about some of the ways we can bring institutional risk managers into your portfolio to help you invest in similar ways to foundations and endowments and reduce your exposure to market risk. But in this segment, we're going to talk about how to eliminate 
market risk from a portion of your portfolio, how to absolutely take zero downside market risk. You say, well, that doesn't sound possible. Well, think about some old familiar tools. Perhaps you've owned a CD, what's commonly called a certificate of deposit. We might call a certificate of disappointment these days, right? Because the interest rates are often so low that folks have a hard time seeing forward momentum investing in such a safe tool. So people have begun to believe that if you invest in safe tools, you don't have opportunity for growth. But nothing could be further from the truth. Did you know that in 1987, Chase Manhattan Bank offered the first, as far as we know, stock market index CD? That's according to uh, a number of articles published in the financial press on March 18, 1987. And that tool, first introduced back in 87, will provide principal protection through the FDIC up to limits but also give opportunity and exposure to some of the upside of a market index. Have you ever heard of such a thing called a market indexed or market linked CD? And it's part of a broader class of tools with more or in some cases less liquidity than a CD offered by banks, insurance, and annuity companies. These tools, if you'll notice the date, have been around for over 35 years, but unfortunately most people have never heard of them. Maybe you've never heard of a market index CD. Maybe you've never heard of an insurance tool that offers protection on the downside for your investment, but still links you to the opportunity for growth and upside in the market. I know that uh, for most of us, if we've never heard it before, we're inclined to be skeptical. And that's why we're willing to show you time-tested and proven tools and principles that demonstrate how these types of products, how these types of opportunities work. You know, if we were to go back and if I could illustrate visually for you today um, a chart showing the performance of the S&P 500 from January of 2000 all the way up through July of this past year, 2022, we would see a jagged line. We'd see a drop descending into 2003, losing significant amounts of value. And many of you can remember back 22 years ago when that was happening, and it wasn't a good feeling. And then we have a recovery, and then we see another plunge back down to a bottom in 2009. Oh, what a roller coaster. And then we start one of the longest bear market or bull market runs that we've ever had in the history of the stock market from 2009 all the way up till 2022 with only a couple of blips in between. But oh, most of us know what happened in January of 2022 as the market began to plunge again. Over all those years, the market averaged, oh, about a little less than 5%. You save all that volatility, all that roller coaster ride for 5%. <laughs> yep, that's true. You say, well, I thought I heard that the S&P returns 10% or 12%. Well, if you cherry pick a few dates, you can probably make it return 20%. But the reality is over the long haul, 5 6%. That's what you're looking at. Well, here's the answer to this question. Can I get a similar return to that or maybe even better, but not have so much volatility? Yes. The answer is in principle protected, market linked investing. Principal protected, market-linked investing. If we're shooting for 5%, I got to tell you that's a pretty easy target and you don't have to have volatility to achieve it. Now, of course, many of our clients have opportunity to invest in tools that could potentially soar well past 5%, especially in today's environment where interest rates are favoring those using principal protected tools. And what we do is we leverage the low guaranteed interest from the CD or the insurance product or the annuity product, and we turn it into potentially many times more, double, triple, quadruple, or whatever. But the goal is over time to have steady, consistent, moderate returns that never see a downside loss due to market volatility. You say, I don't think it's possible. Well, then it might be time for us to chat because I'd love to show you exactly how it works and how you can begin to benefit by putting tools like this in your portfolio today. You do not have to continue to do the same thing and expect different results. We call that the definition of insanity. Warren Buffett has a wonderful quote. He said, only when the tide goes out do you find out who was swimming naked. Well, right now, folks, the tide is pulling out, 
and we don't want you to be sitting there naked and shivering. We want you to be protected in an economic bubble, delivered from all the volatility that's going on in our world right now, and able to retire with peace of mind. You say, well, what does that involve, Colin? Well, it involves a wonderful little visit where we sit down and chat about your goals, your dreams, and your values. And then we help you develop a plan by first testing, where are you? Are you ready to retire? Are you solid and on solid ground going forward? And then we help you develop a plan to take it further. Financial independence, freedom from worry about where the money's going to go and where it's going to come from during retirement. Achieving financial independence is truly within your grasp. It just takes a little bit of time and effort, and it starts with a simple conversation. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592-1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. Investment advisory service is offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC.